Welcome to Camp, Hike, Live, the podcast devoted to helping you learn, enjoy, and explore the great outdoors. Hello there, campers, and welcome to another episode of Camp, Hike, Live. I am Christopher Hiller, and I am here with Nathan Harrington. How are you doing, Nate? I am doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, Summer is kicking off in a great way. Uh, The heat's here now, but I feel... I love the pressure of summer. I, where I live, there's such a long winter. It feels like we, we try to jam as much stuff into summer as we possibly can, and it becomes super overwhelming, but I feel like I thrive in that, that environment of not having enough time. So I'm in like my prime of the, of the year. So I'm really, really excited about that. <laughs> We're the same way. You think school ends and you'll have more time on your hands, but school ends and you're twice as busy as you were before. Yeah, and then you just like, well, you, you thrive. You get everything done. And if you don't have that much stuff to do, I'll sit on the couch or I'll go and sit by the creek and do nothing and I don't get anything done. I get more done when I've got too much stuff to do. All right, anyways, but that's all the things that work inside my head, which leads me to today's episode, and it's all about the head. Uh, We're going to talk about well, physically, what we need to do with our head when we're out here in these adventurous scenarios, but also uh, other ways of, of keeping your cool in situations and things that we need to kind of keep in our mind when we're out there doing these things. Before we get started, Christopher, how are you doing and what is new with you? Uh, you know, it's summertime and what's new with me, I think I've talked about it on the last episode, but uh, as whenever... The summer begins, so does my army training. So that's what's in my oh, brain. Yeah. I, I'm packing. It's it's almost like it takes me three months to pack for my two-week trip. And it's not like when I'm going out and packing for fun. It's like I'm going out to pack for outdoor physical fun activity <laughs> things. <laughs> yep. Trademark that quote. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> but yeah, that's really what's consuming a lot of my time is I'm sorting through all of my army gear, which I have like two rooms full of army gear. I don't know how we have so much. Uh, and I'm paring it down to what I need to take and uh, get my training in for the year. Oh, that's that's cool that you do that. Uh, not something that ever, I just never came to me to do anything when it came to the military or the army. Um, I do have some family that was in the military, but uh, for me, it was more about... Uh, like staying home and being on the farm and and raising kids and stuff. So it's really cool that you get out there and do that. So, all right, on to today's episode, we're going to talk about the head. Now, we did an episode here a little bit ago, and it was all about the feet. So this is all about our most important, is it most important part of our body? I would say our head is. Well, everyone's got one, so I'd say it's important. You you have to kind of have one. (laughs) But uh, yeah, exactly. It's, It's all about that. Now, let's talk. I think the first thing to jump into is maybe let's talk about the different gear side of it. What can we put on our heads and why do we put it on our heads? Oh yeah, we. I think we could have the next two hours full of just gear you put on your head. I mean, <laughs> you focus so much on it. But uh, before we get into all the different gear, do you have a favorite gear for your head? I have a favorite for my head. Do you have a favorite? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it covers head and neck. It's that whole, I mean, because you kind of have to have the neck as well. But uh, I have a buff, which oh, you yeah. probably made famous by the TV show Survivor. But because of the versatility, I'm a huge fan of something that has more than one use. If it has more than one use, I'll probably carry it just because it has more than one use. Whether I use both of the uses or not, I just like that. But a buff is just a... It's made out of a, a synthetic material. It's a tube, basically, that you can slide over your head and wear around your neck as a little bit of a, a kerchief around your neck to keep your neck warm. You could also pull it up to cover up your mouth. You could flip it over your head, cover your ears, your mouth. I mean, the ways that you wear it allow it to be very, very versatile. Uh, you can take it off and use it to, you know, as a as a napkin to, to wipe things up. It's just a really useful piece of gear. So that's my number one. I take that on every trip I go on. I have one buff and it goes everywhere with me. I go through at least one buff every like month. Wow. <laughs> the they get, they get so nasty and dirty. I use them for everything. And I, I tend to be a, a head sweater. I like how nasty mine is. <laughs> It's special to me. I wash it from time to time, but it's it's sentimental oh, how it's gross it is. <laughs> oh, they get so nasty. So nasty. I kind of went a different direction when I, I looked at this big list I put together about talking, and I went a different direction with what was my favorite piece of, I, I don't even, I'm not even going to call it gear. I would say item for the head, and for me, it's sunscreen. Oh, it, okay. I, oh, I never used to burn as a kid. I was one of those kids that just automatically went right to tan. 
But as I've gotten uh, into my 30s and pushing 40s, we'll say, mm -hmm. uh, my forehead and my ears burn so much. So now I've, I've taken sunscreen and... Man, I wish I wore to wore it a lot more when I was a kid. But now I, I lay it on my my uh, forehead. I lay it on my ears. You know, go across the bridge of my nose. But I say that's now my favorite piece of my favorite item for the head outside. For the head, yeah. Well, and I think that we've we, I mean, we've touched it with our our first eight episodes. But how important it is because the burn on your nose or your ears uh, it can get really bad, and that leads into like just the the protection of that part of our body, you know, it's, it's so important. Uh, and I actually have down here too, uh, it's like the bug spray as well. I mean, that when bugs attack you, where do they bother you the most? They're in your ears or they're in your eyes or they're in your mouth. You know, they're attracted to the, the, the CO2 that we're breathing out. So it kind of attracts them to our face. Oh yeah. Uh, this is an option that I don't see a lot of people using, but, uh, instead of just doing bug spray, which can be kind of gross, to rub bug spray on your face, oftentimes you know you put it around your forehead, you sweat, and it runs down into your eyes. Burns. Uh, but, ow! Ow! It, absolutely. But I have a, a, a bug net that goes over top of my head that I wear more often than I would ever imagine that I would wear it. But those are really, really convenient. <laughs> but it <laughs> reminds me. Oh, this is so fun. So I heard this story. Uh, I went on this hike recently after trail days, and we were on the Appalachian Trail. And I love hiking with a buddy of mine, and his name is his trail name is Lucky, and he has grown into that name so much because he is so lucky that he survives any of these trips we go on. But I was hiking with another uh, one of his hiking partners. Uh, with trail name Gur, which he always introduces himself as Gur, but he he's a lot of fun as well. And he was telling me a story of Lucky when they went on this canoe trip here last year, and Lucky was eating sardines. Now sardines come in a uh, oil or different things, and these happen to be sardines and mustard. Uh, and he was eating sardines, and you can imagine Lucky's seventy five, normally white bearded straggly hair when he's on the trail or, or, or on a boat and he was sitting down eating these sardines but it was super super buggy so they had bug nets on and he kept lifting his bug net up to throw in another bite of sardines over and over again well, you tend to get a little forgetful at, at 75 or <laughs> almost 76 now. And one time he threw, I guess he threw in a big bite full of sardine, but never moved his, uh, never moved his bug net. And he was able to still push it into his mouth and made two or three bites on that sardine covered in bug net and pulled it out. It showed me a picture and it's just all yellow and chunks of fish. And oh, so that sometimes the bug nets aren't the best, but. Oh, that picture is priceless. Absolutely priceless. What was I talking about? <laughs> if nobody knows who Lucky is, I recommend you go back and watch some of Nate's uh, hiking the Appalachian Trail videos. Lucky's featured in a couple of them, and he is just a completely entertaining, charming, grandpa-style lovable man and oh man he's he, I, I can i can visualize this he's got the uh, the southern draw he's a southern gentleman of north carolina and uh what what we didn't know until later on is uh, and he's a retired investigative journalist so he's a very intelligent man he's won a pulitzer prize for his writing uh but i know him as the white bearded potentially look homeless looking man that just like staggers around <laughs> on the trail dropping gear and I have to pick the gear back up and give it to him. But yeah, uh, if people do want to catch up on that, our YouTube channel is Between the Blazes and the uh, the playlist is Two Katahdin. And that's where my wife and I were through hiking the Appalachian Trail, hiking to Katahdin. So uh, maybe we can put that in the show notes or something if people want to reach out and 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 look at that. But wow, side trail. Let's get back to what we were talking about. All right, back to your head. I'll bring up, bring it up. So you talked about a buff and, and buffs are great. Like I said, I, I go through a lot of them, but what I am surprised before buffs, I was a big bandana guy. Okay. But I've turned, even though I've now I've got these buffs, I'm still a bandana guy. I bring like five or six bandanas. I have them in my little tub that I bring camping. Bandanas are just awesome that I use for so many things all the time. I, I, do you use many bandanas? Um, uh, like a handkerchief, but not so much. Bandanas tend to be bigger because you can actually put them on your head. I was never able to tie them right. I was never able to get it on there and have it uh, comfortable. So I, I tend to keep with the buffer around my head. But I do oftentimes, depending on where I'm going, is, is carry a little... A uh, handkerchief or something, a smaller square of fabric, but it's mainly for wiping my nose or or something like that. So 
I don't tend to wear them on my head though. Oh, I use them for so many things. Like I use them for filters. Like I feel filter water. I filter fuel. I filter all kinds of things. So okay. bandanas are just like a utility item that I bring. Right, and, right, uh, right, right. I, I, But wrapping them around my head, using them around my neck. I use them before buffs came around. That's what I used all the time. Like always, always. And I use them on my dog too. You know, a little bandana on the dog. It's good to have yeah. uh, for them to bring around. So it's, it's nice because it's that piece of gear, multiple uses. Uh, you never know when it can come in handy and it's easy to carry with you. What I like is you brought out the bug protect or the bug net that you talked about on your head that we just told that good story about mm-hmm. my 14 year old son. That's his favorite item. Nothing bothers him more than the gnat, the gnats buzzing. Bugs. It, it, it will completely derail his entire time if they're bothering him. And to be honest, I we've had this story before. I don't think on the episode, I hate flying things too. So I'm right there with them. I'm like, I don't like flies. I don't like mosquitoes. <laughs> I don't like bees. I'm just like, get no, I don't like them. Here, here's another <laughs> tip though. It leads me to a hot tip. And the hot tip is if you want to uh, kind of help with these insects and stuff a lot of times they're attracted to fragrances uh and this may sound gross i don't particularly care because i don't like them either but a lot of times i don't wash my uh hair for a few days before i go onto a trip even if i'm gonna shower i shower up but i don't put shampoos or like that in my hair because it adds a fragrance to your head and it does more to attract bugs and i'm here to tell you it does work you do smell a little bit worse quicker when you're on the trail as well as your hair may be getting a little bit greasy but you know, if you don't like the bugs flying around your head, don't use uh, really strong shampoos. Well, and the great thing about that is it makes enough of a difference. You say that it's gross, but it's been identified. There's companies out there now have camp safe shampoo, fragrance free shampoo. Right. So you can you can still wash it your is hair. A thing. And yeah, it's a th- it's a big thing. Like, there's a whole company that that's all they make are those different liquid kind of cleaning soaps and things. So it's I just don't wash. <laughs> just stay filthy. Hashtag don't wash. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, next thing. Okay. Next thing I've seen you with, I've seen you with, um, that maybe people wouldn't think about for outdoor gear, but it's part of my every time sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and it's another safety thing as well, uh, because there's one thing that we don't want to do. And one thing is, is to hit our heads on something. And oftentimes, uh, sunglasses can help you, you know, you're not squinting into the sun and maybe be able to see more things. I've seen so many people bonk their heads on, on or low hanging branches because they're either avoiding the sun or when you're hiking on a trail, it's so typical for people just to stare at their feet. And I've seen people run directly into things with their head, which we've already talked about as the most important part of your body <laughs> and we're smashing it into things. So anything we can do to keep our eyesight clear and keep our vision doing well so that we can not smash our heads into things is always a good idea. <laughs> uh, that's a great thing. I would gather, maybe you've done some testing on this, I don't know, but they make like polarized sunglasses. I know mm-hmm. they advertise them for fishermen so you can see better in the water, see fish. It's actually, they work really well. That's what I was wondering. Have you used them on the trail? Do they make a big deal? Oh, not on the trail. But what they do is they cut down on ref- uh, reflections from the water. So when you're staring at uh, moving water, oftentimes you get this reflection. And I was surprised that when you put on polarized glasses, uh, I have a trout stream that runs right behind our house and we do, I do a little bit of fishing, but not very much, but the times that I've ha- actually have been down there fishing polarized glasses, it's like a superpower. You can look through the water and see the fish. It's really quite cool. Um, obviously the, the better you go, you know, if you get the $5, whatever, it's probably not as good, but if you get a good pair of polarized glasses, they do work and they work really well kind of cuts that reflective layer off the water. Well, I recommend people getting glasses, any glasses that help them enjoy the outdoors. I'm on the other side. I had a good story with my wife the other day. I'm like, I I always joke about how old I am and my 14 year old son just eats it up and he makes me 80 or 85 sometimes when he's telling stories. Right. But I'm always like, you know what I really am ready for? I'm ready for those blue blockers. When I was a kid, they talked about these huge, like they look like VR style glasses that they advertise for at least 80 plus year old people to drive. And stuff. I'm like, I'm ready for them. I'm old enough. It's time. Like, give me some of those blue blockers. <laughs> and they, they, they go over your, if you have regular lenses, like regular glasses, they go over the whole thing and they're made out 
out of like some kind of indestructible hard plastic. They yeah. could be like ski goggles, but they're sunglasses. They're awesome. <laughs> I'm going to get you a pair for your birthday. <laughs> I'll wear them. I'm, I'll wear them on the podcast. Everyone can see it. Oh, wait. No, they can't see no, it. No, they can't. Oh. This is just audio. <laughs> Maybe we'll um, have to upgrade and somehow we'll start doing some videos. Right. Yeah, well, we should do it. Yeah, it'll be Camp Hike Live Live. <laughs> oh, there we go. We wouldn't even, wouldn't even, uh, wouldn't even yeah. have to change our logo. We don't even have to. Not at all. I've heard a lot of people now, you know, they're starting to get more people listening to the podcast and people coming up and talking to me about it saying, oh, yeah, I like that. It's a Camp Hike uh, Live. It's like, well. Oh, did I tell you? Now, we're getting a little off topic, but it's ahead. Yeah, so we do off topic. We do research. We research for this show heavily. We do a because lot of research. Because we're professionals. Yeah, because we're professionals. We do that kind of thing. So as I was researching and preparing, I went through some of the demographics of our show. I want to say welcome to Topeka, Kansas. Oh, yeah. That's our <laughs> highest uh, listeners uh, listenership. Listenership, right? Yeah. Really? yeah we yeah. have the it's most from Topeka, Kansas. Kansas. I don't live in Topeka. I've never lived in Topeka. I think I've driven through once. I, Nate and I talked. I don't think he's lived there. But somehow we have a following. So a shout out to Topeka, Kansas. Yes. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Tell all your friends. Tell all of your friends. <laughs> I, I wonder how big of a, a town that is in, in Topeka. I think it's big. I, I think it's a major city. Oh, I really do. I thought it was maybe small, and it's just we have all of them listening. Maybe that's our the maybe town, that's like, our goal. We'll put that on our list. Or get all of Topeka. Our, our goal <laughs> is for everyone in Topeka, Kansas, to listen. Today's episode is brought to you by. Come see Kepper Chris. He's got all you need. A camping guru, outdoor buff, your expert on stuff. He's also camping out in social media. So come see Camper Chris. Okay, okay let's, so let's actually cover something that we're supposed to cover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one thing that I'm noticing, and we haven't talked too much about things, but I wanted to get it in there, and we did an episode recently about uh, layering systems and a lot of the ideas like controlling temperature. Your head can be like the greatest way to control temperature in uh, by taking a hat off and letting some of the heat come out through your head, uh, especially me because they say I'm full of hot air. But that's a great way of uh, regulating our temperatures through our neck and our head. So it's one of the a great use is to be able to either cover up or remove clothing to to regulate temperature. Well, yeah, that's a fantastic thing is. We often talk about, because we typically when we record these, it's in the nice weather, but we also have the winter time. So if people are in the winter time, you, you need your stocking cap, you need your different things. But one of the things I want to talk about, e even in the outdoor lifestyle, the, the live part of Camp Hike Live, rock climbing, you need helmets. Mm -hmm. And I know you're I didn't even think about you're a big that. climber, wow. Nate. So do you? Yeah. yeah t talk a little bit about helmets for your climbing. Don't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> I, we definitely should. Um, we do have some uh, helmets for climbing in. I don't know why we normally reserve this for when we're doing uh, rope climbing. And lately in the last, I would say, 10 years of my climbing experience, we've really went to bouldering. Uh, and it's more low to the ground, anywhere from like 10 to 15 feet, no ropes. We use crash pads. It's just a, a bit different. Uh, we're expecting to to jump off of the rock and land on these crash pads where uh, a helmet typically is when you take a fall with a rope, sometimes you swing and you could swing into the rock and uh, more often you're going to wear a helmet. But I mean, we're not, I love that you brought it up because I wasn't even thinking about it, but we're not limiting ourselves. I mean, this is all about the outdoors. I mean, right. you talk about a lot of your outdoor sports when, when it comes to skiing uh, or mountain biking, uh, mountain biking. That was the other one I was going for as well. Yeah. To, to wear a helmet, like we said, it's pretty darn important thing thing you've got going up there and a helmet can definitely be uh, a useful tool. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the things that I've been doing recently and they push a lot of times in these vacation spots is the zip lining kind of events, like through the canopies of the trees yeah. and helmets are important there. So, I mean, obviously it's, it's from a distance you're going to halt, but it's important. You're, you need your helmet for anything that you may experience a fall in or something may hit you like for me the rock climbing it was more important for me to wear a helmet standing on the ground being holding the rope for a belay when you guys are on right right because you might kick a rope uh rock down and that's what i was really kind of going for is like as a climber i can see where you may not want to wear but as a guy holding you making sure my buddy doesn't die uh you might want to protect yourself and that leads me to something fun about rock climbing when you're rock climbing if a rock does become dislodged and you are the climber what do you think you yell uh 
Do you have any idea what you yell? I have no idea. I, I would think of fun okay, like, okay. like Geronimo because, or something ridiculous. <laughs> but no, a lot of people would think you'd say, heads up, like, but you get that, that idea that someone's going to pick their head up. So it's just rock. I mean, it's as simple as that. If a rock is falling, you yell rock. And if, as a belayer, you know, when you hear rock, you're going to take and go on belay or lock in your belay and then just cover your head. You're not looking up because we do not want to be looking up and taking a rock to probably the more important part of the head, which is the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of the other actual functions of the head, the looking, the smelling, the eating are in the face part. They all come from that, that front thing. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Exactly. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This, this episode. episode is so awesome because we've been all over the place and it's been just kind of fun to shoot from the hip and have a good time. So I covered uh, uh, regulating temperatures. We did uh, bug nets. Uh, what are some of the other things that we're going to wear on our heads though? Because we didn't cover products so much, like different things that, uh, you know, because we covered stocking caps. Now with stocking caps, are we doing like wool stocking caps, knitted stocking caps? Uh, w what's your go-to? A fleece. I typically have a fleece stocking cap and it's mostly because okay uh especially in the winter time it keeps the most heat in all right and, and it's the easiest to regulate you can wear it at the very tippy top of your head or you can pull it down all over your ears that that's my go-to i know my wife she's really uh, more into the wool mm -hmm. uh, but i love the fleece okay cool uh and for me i don't wear stocking caps as much sometimes i do if it's really cold uh, and I'm going to be doing more standing outside, but if I'm going to do any kind of physical activity, I find out that the thin buff and then having my hood, uh, because uh, putting a hood over top of your head, it'll also trap some of the heat coming in from your body and around your neck and kind of encase it in there. So I can do a buff and a hood with a kind of like a layer like that. And I find it, uh, for me, a little bit warmer than just having a stocking cap and having your neck exposed. But if I wear a stocking cap with a hood, I find it to be too warm. So it's a, it's a little bit of a layering thing. Yeah, layering happens. I mean, you layer your body, you layer your head. That, that just makes sense for me. Let's let's shift gears a little bit. Can we shift gears a little bit? Oh, absolutely. So you're the hiking expert. Obviously, you've done the Appalachian Trail and, and many other trails uh, throughout your years. Well, I'm starting to research. I want to do a multi-day hike coming up. I, that's not my bag of tricks. I've done some hiking, but nothing dramatic. Mm -hmm. So I've got a book. I went and keeping with the head theme, mm -hmm. I'm getting my head right, and I'm reading a book about people hiking the Appalachian Trail. Okay. Uh, I think the name of the book I got is called Where's the Next Shelter, I think, by Gary Sizer is the one I'm reading. And he was okay. he's just a guy about our age who decided to hike it, hike the trail, like, like a lot of people, and I'm sure it's similar to a lot of other books, but that's what I do. What about you to keep your head right, to keep your, your head going uh, on your hiking trips or your outdoor adventures? It's interesting that we kind of go that way because we, we were curious to how this how your head was going to work because there's a limited amount of things. But it's so important in anything that we do in life, and it carries over. We talk so much about having fun with the outdoors. And how quickly that can turn negative and ways to approach that. Uh, we found that with a hiking trip, especially the long ones, expectation can be a great tool to help you in having a goal. And, and that can really be helpful in uh, working towards something and having the inspiration to go. But expectation can also crumble and, and lead to disappointment and sadness. And these things can really get into your head, especially when you're doing something. In, and for some of the viewers that may not even be familiar with the Appalachian Trail or the distance, we're talking 2,200 miles and taking six months to walk from north to south on the east coast of the country. Uh, it is a very long time, lots of time in the, in the tent, lots of time hiking. And if your head's not right, it can really be a mental challenge. And uh, it's also noted that that's what stops a lot of the hikes. A majority of them is people failing mentally. That's what I read is that most of the people that stop, it isn't for a physical injury. It's for a mental injury, meaning they, they just didn't have it in their heart. Their brain told them, you don't want to do this anymore. And that's when they get off the trail. And even like this book, you're saying it now. And the book I was reading, a matter of fact, I've read a couple of books. They all say that's what it is. It's like you lose your head for it. You lose your passion for it. You lose the drive to keep going. And some people lose the, uh, the reason why they're doing it. Why am I out here? That's a question a lot of people ask themselves. They get out there and they experience this trail and, and all of these things. And then they hit a wall. A lot of times they, they call it the Virginia blues because when you're hiking North and you get to Virginia, Virginia is the first of the, what's well, actually the longest state, but it's one of the states that doesn't have a whole lot of spectacular 
I don't want to say spectacular because there's a lot of great things in Virginia, but you tend to hit what they call the green tunnel. A lot of it's encased in mountain laurel. Uh, you don't see the, the, these views a lot of the time and you get the Virginia blues. You wonder why you're out there. You start asking yourself these questions. You're hiking, you know, 15, 20 miles every day doing the same thing over and over, eating the same food. So that's where having that goal, something to focus on. I actually have a video. It's called Dealing with the Miles. It's called It's a Tips from the Trail on our YouTube channel about dealing with miles and the way that miles start to have that negative impact on you because it seems like it's never ending. Uh, So uh, having achievable goals is really good. There's a couple other things we can do as well. I don't know how much you are into music, Christopher. And I think we've talked about going to music festivals and something. But there's the kind of people, if you're like me, when you get certain music, it gives you goosebumps. Like it's I'm same way, same, same way. way. Yeah. Some people that doesn't treat them that way. But if you're the kind of person that a certain song gives you goosebumps, music is a super, super tool to use in lifting your spirits, changing your head, you know, going from being in not such a good mood. I mean, we're not even just talking in hiking trails, but even the car ride to go to Yosemite National Forest, you know, it's like you're, you're going to these places and the car ride has got into your mind. And next thing you know, you're just... Uh, you just are not having any fun. Music can just like flip a switch can change the way that you're, you're approaching something. Uh, another thing that my <laughs> wife and I did is we laughed laughing, man, just the act of laughing can make you feel so much better. When we're on long car rides, we always make sure we have a couple comedians to listen to. And then when we were on the trail, we just laughed at things. We, we wanted to keep spirits high. There's even research done that if you smile, just the act of smiling releases like chemical smart things in your brain science. And what that does is it actually can make you happy just by act like physically smiling. I tend to always think about what's the next awesome thing that I'm working towards. Okay. I I very rarely live in the minute of what I'm doing, whether it's hiking or canoeing or whatever. It's always like, what's the next awesome thing I'm about to do? Like, oh, I'm going to get a great, we'll say cheeseburger and eight miles or you know i'm like food yeah yeah, food's a good motivator for my brain but it's whatever it is or hey i'm gonna see my dog on mile 10 or whatever it is when i'm thinking ahead i always think about what's that next awesome thing and that can hold me for literally hours just thinking about what's the next awesome thing and then it doesn't leave anything to be miserable because it's always what's the next awesome thing that's how i deal with it yeah and that and that's and if you're depending on the situation you're approaching uh i kind of touched on that when i was talking about like the goals and always having something to work towards and where the uh unlike we were talking about the appalachian trail it's when you have that very far off goal that's where that becomes a little difficult and what you need to do is pepper in smaller goals to get there. Like you say, it's the next sandwich. It says, you know, you can have those intermittent goals, the the ones that help you lead up to that long goal. And like, it's as simple as the sandwich. It's as simple as the next stop or looking forward to that next thing and not focusing so much on this long-term end goal because it gets so far out there. It feels out of reach and like, it's never going to happen. And why am I doing this? I mean, it just goes downhill really quickly. So... Yeah, it's a good idea. I, I really like that. Give yourself achievable goals that can keep you smiling and can keep you laughing throughout your adventures, and you'll never get in your own head. Yeah, it'll keep your head right. Nice. Keep I, your head right. Yeah. So, I hey, I think we covered it all. At least I've checked off all the things on my box. Do you have anything else you want to throw in there? No. <laughs> awesome. I'm looking down. I'm like, this is this is good. This has been one of those episodes that I, I'll look back on and be like, that was such a fun chat. With yeah, us. that's really. I remember before we started, just to give the listeners a little insight, we looked at us like, are we going to be able to fill the time frame we're looking at? And we're like, no. Oh, well, sometimes we just got to live with the fact we got short episodes. But <laughs> here we are. We're right where we need to be. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Just do you have a quote for us today? I do have a quote for us. We'll leave you with a quote. All right. If a hundred foot oak tree had the mind of a human, it would only grow to be 10 feet tall. (laughs) Thank you for listening. And until next time, bye-bye. If you like what you have heard today and you want to hear more from us about camping, hiking, and living the outdoor life, we ask that you subscribe to our podcast, share it with your friends, and help us to keep coming to you. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, You can do that on Facebook. Search Camp Hike Live Forum.